So let's see if we can be a bit more formal about this notion of usefulness. Okay, so I erased all the stuff that I had before, uh, but basically you could summarize that last slide as saying that relevance measures the effect on the Bayes optimal classifier, right? So a variable is relevant if it can make the Bayes optimal classifier's performance better or worse. So really relevance is about information. So when you were talking earlier about things that you might use for filtering, you said, well, I like things that have variance or things that have entropy or things that give me information gain. Those are all measures of the information that is present in a particular variable or a particular feature, right? Yeah. So really, from the Bayes optimal classifier's point of view, the only thing that matters is how much information a particular variable provides, you know, conditioned on some label or just in general how much information it provides. So a variable like C here, which doesn't change, has zero entropy, provides no information, independent of the value of the label, and therefore cannot be relevant to the Bayes optimal classifier. Does that make sense? It does. Now, I, and, and that this, um, this notion of help, usefulness, not helpfulness, but usefulness, is when we condition on a particular predictor, and that's why we can have C being useful in the context of a perceptron. Right. So usefulness is exactly about effect on error, given a particular classifier or some specific model. So usefulness is exactly about minimizing error given some particular model or some particular learning algorithm. Right? So in this case, although C is clearly not relevant, it is, in fact, useful, at least for something like W transpose X. Now, this is not useful for a decision tree, nor is it relevant. It is not relevant to this particular problem, but it is, however, useful for some algorithms. Now, just to clarify, so, so it seems like the Bayes optimal classifier has a privileged position in this definition, right? So couldn't we define relevance as measuring the effect on a perceptron? Relevance? No. No, I'm saying, but it, it, you just you plugged in a, a kind of classifier there. Why can't we plug in some other kind of classifier? For like the Bayes optimal classifier? Yeah, why is that one special? Because the Bayes optimal classifier captures this notion of um, the optimal thing that you could do. It's not a specific algorithm. I mean, you could write down an algorithm that would compute the Bayes optimal classifier, except that it requires you looking at all possibly infinite number of hypotheses, right? But it is the, it, the Bayes optimal classifier computes the best label given all the probabilities that you could ostensibly compute over all the hypothesis space. It doesn't have to actually require a specific algorithm to do so. It truly is a measure of information of variables. So any other algorithm you have has a bias, a particular inductive bias. Okay. You feel it? Okay. <laughs> okay, that's a fine answer. So at the very beginning of our discussion, Michael, you actually uh, asked me this question of what the criteria was when I said that feature selection was about maximizing some criteria, removing features um, according to some criteria. And I told you that eventually we'd kind of get to the point of what the criteria is. The notion of relevance versus usefulness gives us an idea of thinking about what that criteria is. Ultimately, we've been talking about unsupervised learning mostly in a kind of vacuum, but presumably you know whether some particular description, compact or otherwise, some particular label is in fact a good one based on how it's used later on. So one way of thinking about this is the labels that I come up with for a set of data are exactly good ones insofar as they help me to do something else like classification later. All that clustering that we did before, like with k-means and em, you could think of those as a kind of feature transformation algorithm, which is what we'll be talking about next, where you've taken a bunch of features and you've converted them into something simple like a label. And whether that label is a good label or a bad label depends entirely upon whether you can then do some kind of classification or regression problem later. The label in this case meaning the cluster name. Right. Got it. Okay. okay. That's interesting. So you'll actually find if you go through the literature and you, you look at some algorithms that people have predicted that a lot of the measures like information gain or entropy or whatever often end up being couched in terms of relevance. But ultimately, what we really care about is usefulness, or at least one could argue. Cool. Okay. So that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about for feature selection. There's a lot of algorithms, and um, if you go and you look at the material that we've made available to everyone, you'll be able to see some of these algorithms discussed in more detail. But at a high level, these are the, the key issues that I wanted you to see. So with that, Michael, let's wrap up.